Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you rev a review of a new filter system uh, from the company Nisi. I have re uh, reviewed some of their products before, but this is really the first time that I am kind of getting to know them on their main level. I reviewed a, their first lens uh, several months ago, but I had actually not reviewed their filters previously. So I was interested after I was fairly pleasantly surprised by the 15 millimeter F4 lens that to take a look at some of their kind of primary offerings when it comes to their filter collection. In this case, I'm reviewing the new V7, and it is a filter holder that combines both a circular polarizer and the ability to control that behind stacking on some square filters and a new holder that will hold up to three different filters of varying kinds uh, stacked in there. And so today we're going to explore what you're getting for your money. We'll take a look at how the filters hold up optically, if they're really true to life color, as they say, and, uh, and you know, give you a, an idea of whether or not this is is a valid option for you. So let's take a quick look at what you are getting in the kit. That's going to really depend on what you actually uh, purchase with it. There are a variety of different pricing levels. So you can go as cheap as about $250, which gives you the basic filter kit along with the circular polarizing uh, polarizing filter that goes in there and uh, you can also get the cap that goes over the top to help to protect if you have the assembly taken apart and that can range all the way up to you know nearly a thousand dollars if you're packaging in a lot of different filters as a part of it what I'm going to review today is somewhere in the mid-level, which uh, basically is what they would call like the starter kit, to where you're getting both the, the things that I've described, but you're also getting a few other things like a graduated ND filter, like one of these, and an ND1000 filter for doing long exposures. Along with that comes with a few things like a very nice uh, carrying case here that is designed to actually attach to your tripod. And so you can have a convenient access to your filters without getting them. Uh, in, in my case, I, I went from the extremes of operating in the deep snow to operating on the sand of the beach. And so in either case, you kind of want to keep your stuff out of there. I will say that I was very pleasantly surprised with the quality of the cases here. Kind of reminds me of Peak Design products and a very robust Velcro there as well, but it gives you a place to store the filter kit here. Also to store some various, uh, they'll include some step up rings as a part of it. We're working off of basically an 82 millimeter uh, front thread. And so obviously if you have a lens larger than 82 millimeters, this kit is not for you, but anything 82 millimeters and smaller in terms of a filter size, you should be okay. Now they don't give you enough you know, there's all kinds of different step up ring combinations. And so they cover some of the main ones from I think around 58 millimeters up to 77 millimeters, which is just then a little bump up to 82 millimeters. But if you're a, a more of an odd filter size, you're probably going to need to uh, find another step up ring that'll at least get you either get you right up to 82 millimeters or at least up to what one of their common sizes was. We've also got a carrying strap that will attach to that. And the actual kit itself, I'm going to break down how it functions here. And so first of all, you're going to use that step up ring if you don't have an 82 millimeter filter thread to get you up to the basic design here. And so there is a, a combination um, lock and uh, that will allow you to um, loosen that up and so that you can then see the circular polarizing filter. It is nice and slim and uh, one thing that I've seen on other similar systems, but it's a very you know clever design, is the ability to have an actual uh, control dial here on the, the side that allows you to rotate that filter, which is one of the points of a circular polarizing filter to get it into the right position without having to have access to it, which means that even if you've got other filters that are mounted on here and stacked on, you can continue to control the behavior of the polarizing filter. And so to uh, add the rest of the assembly on, it's simply a matter of first pulling out this little side dial, getting it on there, and then tightening that down, which will allow you to have a nice firm connection. And then after that, you can you know, rotate as is needed and access to your filters. One thing that I actually really like about this design is that it is designed in holding the filters. And so those are either going to be 100 by 100 millimeter filters, like this one, for example, that's an ND1000. So it, it's designed to just put into place and to stay there. And I will note about uh, filters like the, uh, the 100 by 100 ones like this is that they do have a nice uh, foam backing here that allows you to get a really nice uh, tight fit that will make sure that no stray light is getting in there. But this operates by by compression. And so that helps to hold that filter in place without you having to adjust something else. 
The graduated filters are larger, 150 by 100, and obviously that is designed to give you the flexibility to be able to position the graduation uh, where you want it to be in the part of the frame. So maybe you want very little of it, maybe you want a lot of it. But the value of a graduated filter like this is, for example, in this shot, um, I had a, if I wanted to balance the sky with the foreground just to get a more balanced exposure, I could throw that on. Or I can use it in the reverse way when I was shooting underneath the uh, pier here, I wanted to have the ability to uh, bring down the exposure of the water, which was the bright part of the frame, and so that I could get a more natural exposure on the underside of the pier. And so reversing that allowed me to accomplish that. But in uh, in operation, um, all of this worked well in that I it held the filter where I wanted it nice and tight, and the assembly was easy to set up and break down in the field, which is obviously going to be really, really important for that. So quickly, there are a variety of other filters that you can use here, and, and so I've got some of them here. And I was, again, very impressed with the presentation of these various filters. They also do come with a, um, a nice case here as well. And, and so, you know, these, these all have like a nano coating on both sides that help them to be scratch and oil resistant, um, resistant to fingerprints, things like that. You can also get a nice case like this that, again, like the case for the filter holder itself, uh, gives you ability to store a number of filters you know in your collection in a convenient thing to bring along as well so presentation really really nice here and pricing is is good i mean these filter systems tend to be be expensive period. And so uh, for the base filter kit, not a bad price. And then the varying uh, filters that you're going to add on, you can either purchase those in kit, in some cases as individual filters. And, and so you can kind of build up what you want. So before we draw a conclusion, why don't we dive in and take a look at some image quality and see the results I was actually able to get using this uh, kit in the field. So let's break down performance on these filters. The uh, primary purpose, at least for me, in most applications for ND1000 or other long exposure filters is in many cases where you want to add a kind of dynamic movement effect to an existing image. So example, in this case, we've got the churning water here going through the, um, the snow and ice flow here. But on the right side, by slowing that exposure way down with an ND1000 filter from the uh, Nisi kit, I was able to get this image here, which I think is a little bit more visually pleasing uh, as a byproduct of that. Here's another application that I love. In this case, obviously waves are crashing in, but the ability even during bright daylight times to slow that exposure way down allows you to get this kind of misty look around things like piers. And it's one of the most popular applications for something like this because you end up with a, an image that has a you know somewhat kind of um, ghostly, moody type look that is much more visually and aesthetically pleasing than the kind of image you would get under normal normal circumstance in this condition. Another application would be an image like this, where um, typically because of the waves crashing in, I wouldn't be able to get an actual reflection of something that, like you could with still water. But if you can slow down the actual exposure and eliminate you know, the, the dynamic movement of the waves crashing in, you can end up with an image that under you know, these type conditions can allow you to get a nice reflection where you wouldn't otherwise be able to do that. Here's another example, you know, with a different kind of orientation to show how that I've been able to create an image that I might be able to get something more similar to in still conditions, but I would never be able to get them with the wind and the waves crashing in. Going back to the pier here for a moment underneath, uh, here's an image which, which I think looks really kind of visually cool, but as you can see from this video, what I was actually shooting into was a situation where it was just one round of waves after another that was coming in. But in this case, I've been able to create a completely different kind of look as a byproduct of using the Nisi filters. So a couple of the things to evaluate here is uh, color fidelity. You don't want some kind of nasty color tint coming in as a result of the filters, which I have seen before, unfortunately. And you want to be able to preserve the optical performance of your lens. So here we have got the Sigma 20 millimeter F2 uh, that I was using for these particular shots. And so this is the shot here without any kind of filter attached. And so we can see um, if we look in the center of the frame over on the left side that we have nice 
nice crisp sharpness and you can you know see the basic color white balance that is there now on the right side I have got an ND64 um, uh, filter so six stops here and so you can see that our detail looks very very similar white balance is very close it's not identical but you can see that it's done a good job of preserving detail and preserving an image that looks you know very similar to the original so now I've switched over to the ND1000 or a 10 stop filter. So obviously we're getting a much more dramatic effect here with the longer exposure on the movement of the water. And uh, mostly again, we're wanting to see how our color fidelity and our detail is held up. So in this case, um, color fidelity is quite similar to what we saw before. I do think that there is a slight bit more impact to uh, contrast and sharpness relative to not using the filter at all. Um, it still looks really good. Um, no, you know, I have no major complaint there, but I feel like there was just slightly less of a hit with the ND64 filter. Now here's another kind of interesting shot where I was shooting into the sun and I put on the ND1000 filter because rather than getting the waves crashing in in a more typical scene, I wanted to be able to just kind of get a little bit more of an abstract type image, which I think I've been able to accomplish um, with the pattern that's coming here from the, the sun you know, rays that are coming across. And as the waves went by, it kind of created this painterly type effect. And then the general smoothing of the image makes for a, you know, a little bit more of an artsy type piece than what I would get just shooting typically right into the sun like this. Now in this image, um, you can see that the, just without using any kind of filter, I was ending up with an image that was just, you know, a little murky looking. Uh, the balance between the sky and the foreground, you know, left me, let's just say less than thrilled. And so what I did is use that graduated ND filter that allowed me to get a more balanced exposure, as you can see. And in this case, because there was really nothing distinctive in the sky, it just added a little bit of, of blue into the sky that I think ends up producing producing a much more visually pleasing image than the one without the filtering. Then finally, as noted, in this case, I wanted to uh, balance the exposure on the, the bottom half. And so what I've been able to do is by flipping that ND, graduated ND filter around on the image here on the right, I've been able to balance the exposure between the rafters that are more in shadow with the uh, various pier supports that were in more light below. And so on the right, I've ended up with, I believe, a more balanced exposure relative to what I got here on the left side. So obviously, I mean, my favorite thing about you know filters like this is the ability to do uh, long exposures and then also to have that flexibility of you know in more demanding scenes to maybe also do a graduated ND filter because you know you can get solid ND fil filters in circular filter situations and obviously unlike some other filter kits that I reviewed in the past this is not really designed to retrofit a, uh, a lens that doesn't accept normal screw in filters but rather this is uh, the ability to add on uh, varying other filters give you more flexibility on getting filter results without ending up with vignetting. Sometimes if you stack circular filters, you end up with some mechanical vignetting. And obviously something like a graduated filter is just not an option in a circular screw on filter. So it does give you some versatility. The results I think speak for themselves, you know, good resolution, good color. I wouldn't say that it is, you know, true to life in the sense that the color balance was identical to the original, but it was close enough that just minor tweaks in post-processing uh, gave me a result result that I was happy with. And so, you know, all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with the results I got. And you'll have to determine for yourself whether the Nissi approach and design, you know, kind of fits what you want to do in a superior to other filter options, filter kit options for your application. At the end of the day, though, I, I'm perfectly happy using a filter kit like this to get the results that I wanted because I got the results that I wanted. And that's really what matters to me. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, you can find uh, some purchase links if you want to go and, and check that out further. There's also a link to a, a quick review and image gallery that I did as well, so you can go check that out also. And of course, uh, beyond that, the typical links to follow myself or Craig on social media. Um, you can become a patron. You can uh, purchase channel merchandise. You can check out our new channel, Let the Light in TV. Do all of those things in the description down below. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and let the light in.